My name's Stuart McLennan, and if you're new here, I'm a professional landscape photographer and gallery owner based in the Lake District. For the past six and a half years, I've run my gallery based here in Keswick, and recently I made the rather bold decision to upscale my business and move to a much bigger gallery unit. Now, if you've not watched my previous video outlining the move, I suggest you go and watch it. I'll put a link in the description. This video is going to be talking about what I've been doing with the gallery since I've moved in, how I've arranged the artwork and my plans going forward. My aim long term for this gallery is to make it a destination for landscape photography enthusiasts. Why don't you come and check out what I've done with the place? Now, in terms of getting this place ready, it wasn't too bad, to be honest. I think I'd said in the previous video about how good of a space it was and how how much it was basically ready to go. The, the week leading up to opening, it took about a week to 10 days, something like that, to get it sorted. But the main thing we had to do in here was, was sort out the lighting, um, pull the existing lights out and put up new uh, sort of track lighting, where, well, spotlights more than track lighting, but there was a little bit of finicky work in terms of rerouting cabling and putting new junction boxes in and stuff like that, just boring stuff, basically. But I must give a big thanks to my mate, John Graham, for helping me out with that because he's far better with electrics than, than I am. My knowledge of electrics is pretty much non-existent compared to his, so I ended up being sort of chief holder-upper of everything but it was a two-man job because it was one of those jobs where there was a lot of step ladders involved and a lot of finicky stuff basically so that took a little bit of time but just about sorted with that now and then the other thing was putting up flat pack there's only one thing i hate more than painting and it's flat pack i absolutely hate it which I absolutely hate. It's it's second only to painting for me. I absolutely hate putting up flat pack. It, it's easy, but it's mind-numbingly boring. So a quick thanks to my mate Steve Williams who, who came through and helped me with that and made uh, a very boring, long job a lot quicker. But yeah, getting it ready hasn't been too bad really because as a space, as I say, it's really good. And New Balance had painted the walls not long before they left which was great for me because painting a room this size would have taken a long time but also it would have been quite expensive now with a lot of galleries most of the time you'll see white walls in them and that's usually to compensate for a lack of natural light now in here i don't have that problem i've got massive windows there and a big massive door where there's loads of natural light coming in so it was quite handy to have the walls already already painted like a it's like a matte gray and it makes the artwork stand out really well if i had white walls in here with so much natural light coming in it actually would have been a bit of a problem because i would have had so much light bouncing around in here that i then would have had to use even stronger spotlights to compensate for that it's something that unless you in my position running a gallery, you know, a lot of people when they're, they're printing their artwork and stuff like that, they're not actually really thinking about lighting it properly, which is a, a huge part of it, to be honest. And in my old gallery, where the lighting was very different, uh, there wasn't an awful lot of natural light coming in. I had a relatively small window and I was nearly always in shade most of the day. The spotlights had to be quite strong in there and I also had to have white walls. So in here, don't have that problem at all. Now, I just wanted to touch quickly on this rail system that I use for hanging the artwork. This is a system that I really wanted to use in my old space, and it's a pretty standard sort of system that you'll see in a lot of galleries. What it gives you is ultimate flexibility to be able to move artwork around, quickly get stuff on and off the walls, and also, if you're like me and, and like most galleries to be honest where you've got mixed size artwork what it does is it allows you to very quickly move things up and down or side to side and play around with the displays and the configurations 
in the old place because it was a really old building and it was old brick that wasn't even I couldn't put one of these systems in place it would have been very difficult basically so I had to use kind of the old-fashioned method of just screwing the wall and work around that so the problem with that method of course is that I was basically stuck to one configuration of displaying the artwork all the time whereas in here I can basically do anything I want so I can have a row of three or four small images I can have one big print I can have two or three side by sides around it, it whatever I want basically so the hanging system is a real benefit <laughs> So a really important piece of equipment that I need in this gallery is a printer uh, to be able to print on site for people who want things at different sizes that I might not have on the wall at the time when they come in. Now in the old gallery, I did actually used to have a printer on site, uh, a smaller Canon, I think it was a Pro 100S, printed up to A3+. Plus. And I actually had to take that printer out because in the old building, because the room I was in was basically a dust magnet. And when people were moving around upstairs, the dust would kind of percolate down. And trying to keep a print, an expensive printer clean in there was an absolute nightmare. And I ended up having to take it out. Now, since then, that printer actually broke. But uh, at home for the past four years now I've used a big Canon Pro 2100 to do all my printing which uh, in time I may actually move through here but for now uh, I've got this which is uh, Canon Pro 1000 which is a printer that you'll all be quite familiar with I would imagine if you watch landscape videos on YouTube good secondary printer for in here prints up to A2 gives me a lot of flexibility in terms of being able to print for people when they come in so I've had numerous occasions already where someone's come in and seen something on the wall that they wanted a smaller size and I've been able to just run it off very quickly for them and have it done in, in half an hour. So really important piece of equipment, this uh, printer on site. Uh, so just quickly, one last thing. You'll see in the middle of the gallery here, we've got a couple of workbenches that are on casters. Quite often in here, I get a lot of people who want things either reframed or they want them mounting or whatever it is and i need an area that i can work on basically so those two workbenches there double as a display area so when people come in there's some nice frame prints on there but when it's time to do a bit of work in terms of you know reframing a bit of artwork i can very quickly either move those benches into a, a better place or I can just take the, the frame prints off display, uh, put some bubble wrap down and work on top of that to reframe artwork or whatever is required. So it gives me a little bit of flexibility and at any time I can also just take those workbenches out completely if I want to change the configuration of the displays at any time. So practical practical benefits to that uh, and something that really was a struggle for me in the other shop because I would you know quite often get people who want artwork put in different frames and while I may have been able to do that it was quite awkward because I just didn't have the work area to be able to do that comfortably so I would often have to like close the shop and just get on my hands and knees on the floor and reframe stuff that way whereas now I've got a basically I've got a workbench area that is fine for me to use and people can still come in the gallery and I can be working away and not disturb anyone basically so yeah really practical benefits to those two benches in the middle of the shop okay let's get you away from the desk and show you some of this artwork that I've got on display so this first wall, this is the panoramic wall, if you can call it that, I guess. And the configuration of the pictures on here will stay pretty constant. I've talked in the past about how these panoramic images tend to sell well to a tourist crowd. And if you've not seen any of those videos, I'll put a link somewhere so you can see them. But basically the gist of it is that the, the big 
wall filler type images, as you can imagine, tend to sell pretty well. So at the minute, I've got three rows of two planned up here, two white, two dark, and two light oak frames. And as I said, these will stay pretty constant. I've got a you know a big library of panoramic images, and I'll just kind of print them in rotation depending on you know how they're selling. Uh, but at the minute, these sort of six or seven that I've got on display tend to be the best sellers. Uh, so that's what's up there at the minute. Uh, underneath, we've got some smaller prints. Now, these look quite small in comparison to the panels, but they are actually a decent size print. Uh, these are like 20 by 16 frames. The panoramic ones above have actually got bigger since being in the old shop, just because I've got much more wall space basically so a lot of impact these pictures and then underneath we've got the two uh, flat pack benches which uh, you know they got the, the colors and everything go really well and I'm I'm pleased how you know the idea that I had in my head has, has come out pretty well in reality to be honest so we've got two nice white benches underneath uh, with obviously the the artwork on top and then Underneath, we've got some storage for things like, uh, you know, spare mounts, paper, tubes, all the usual gubbins you'd expect to see in an art gallery. Uh, so that's one wall. And then if we just move over to the opposite wall, same sort of setup, two benches underneath with, with storage and then images on display. And then in terms of what's on the wall here, these are more, more of like a 16-9 crop image. So slightly less panoramic, more, more sort of squat in shape, but still pretty big in terms of inches. These are roughly about an A1 size width with a little bit cropped off the top. And this wall, I'll probably be a bit more flexible in terms of moving displays around. So at the minute, we've got four big ones in the middle, two A2s to the left, two A2s to the right, and then another spare A2 on the end. But this will change around quite a lot depending on, you know, how things are selling, what I'm shooting at the time, that sort of thing. Uh, one thing that I was kind of hamstrung a little bit by in the old gallery in terms of space was not really being able to put enough smaller prints on display. Uh, I've reused an old display unit there to the to have on display some little they're like nine by six size prints and they're just a nice size for people to be able to take away as a, like a memento and i kind of missed a bit of a trick in the old place with with uh, with these size prints because they sell really well so i've got quite a lot of those on display in terms of both framed and loose prints on the units and they're something that I'm constantly printing off, which is uh, which is a good thing, obviously. And then on the wall behind me, I'm going to stand here because I'm conscious that the light's a bit mixed in here. And obviously, I don't want it to be too dark. But on the wall behind me is more of like a feature wall. So at the minute, I've got uh, a big print of, a, of an image that I took in the fort 18 months ago in, in all that snow. And... This, this kind of space that I have now means that I can have the best sellers that sell really well, but also I can have images like that that are going to probably take a little longer to sell, but they will appeal to a certain type of, of uh, buyer. And having the flexibility to be able to have both those things on display at the same time is huge because in the old place, I had to play it a little safe with what went on the wall because if I put something like that on display, which, you know, the size is a bit misleading again here. It's actually a really big print now. It's probably about A0. But if I put that on the wall in the old gallery, it was almost certainly taking up space for something that would have sold quicker. So having that flexibility of being able to play around with the stuff that I put on on the walls is, is absolutely huge. What I am going to do there is put some spotlights up above that uh, that print there just to light it a little better, although the lighting's pretty good at the minute. Now, I didn't touch on the lighting at the start. Um, 
I am having a slight issue. Now, it's only a slight issue, and it's probably me being a bit finicky. But the one slight disadvantage to having a room like this where the ceilings are so high is that ideally I'd like the spotlights to be a little closer to the artwork at the minute even though the lighting's pretty good it is a little diffused and I'd like a bit more impact in terms of the lighting on the artwork so in time what I'm probably going to have to do is invest in some some track lighting so I can get a track lower down away from the ceiling and get the light a bit more directed on the artwork but you know, it's a, it's a minor gripe at the minute, to be honest. If I had to, you know, rate the lighting in here on a, on a 1 to 10 scale, I'd say it's probably about a 7 or an 8 at the minute. But going forward, you want it to be as good as possible. So this is the main area. And what we've also got here is the TV. Uh, TV behind me. We'll just move there. There we go. And um, the TV is really important because... What it allows me to do is also have like a rolling display of artwork on a, you know, it's a 55 inch telly for stuff that isn't on the walls currently. And then it's also great for marketing for things like workshops and stuff. So what I've been doing there is clipping up bits and bobs out of YouTube videos and from behind the scenes stuff on workshops. And what I'm able to do is just give a little bit more a little bit more background as to how some of this stuff is produced and also some more information about workshops and stuff like that and I've had quite a lot of people already commenting on how useful that is uh, one of the images that I've got on display the castle head color shot that's a standard panoramic image with you know multi-stitch uh, configuration what I've done there is show how that's put together because you know, for people who watch these videos, you know, like me and you who are, who are photographers, we kind of take a lot of this for granted. But to Joe Public, who comes in off the street, who isn't aware of any of this stuff, what it helps to do is just give a little bit more background, a little bit of education as to the technicalities of how some of this stuff is put together. Because it's very easy to just walk past a place like this and just dismiss a lot of it as just snapshot photography or whatever which is a whole other discussion but the tv is vital for that so that's been uh, been really good and i've had that on constantly and then when people aren't in the shop because you know unless you're a sociopath i don't particularly like listening to the sound of my own voice so i'll just put it on mute basically and then when people come in i'll unmute it but um but this is the, the main area and then oh what i should also say is we've got a couple of benches either side of the the display island here and it's just for people so they can sit down because i think this is probably more of a a bloke thing than anything else but we've all been in shops where you don't want to be there and you just want to sit down i'm thinking more getting dragged around women's clothes shops with the missus but um but yeah having a couple of benches there just you know makes it a bit nicer for people and you know kids can sit on them as well so anyway this is the main area and then i'll take you through to the the little small room i've got as well which uh, i'm in the middle of working on just quickly back to the desk before i forget because i knew i would forget just a quick plug for my calendar i didn't do one last year various different reasons it's back this year you can pre-order it now it'll ship in september priced at 19.99 plus postage and what I've also done in previous years, and I'm going to do again this year, is for the very reasonable price of $35.99, you can get a calendar plus an additional A4 print. There's a selection of prints on the website that you can choose from. I think there's five, and it's really good value considering the cost of a, a print normally. So, uh, so yeah, go to the link in the description. You can pre-order it now, and it'll ship in September. I'll only be doing a you know, fairly small run of these, so there won't be, you know, hundreds and hundreds of them. So if you want to get a calendar, get on there and uh, and get it pre-ordered. Right, back to the video. So this is the smaller room and it's an area that I still need to do a little bit of work on, to be honest. It, it's fine for the moment, just, just to getting the place open. 
but the lighting is a little bit of an issue. Some of the issues I was talking about in the main area with, with the light being a little diffused because of the ceiling height, I've got the same problem in here, but I haven't got any natural light coming in. So for my liking, the lighting needs to be a bit better on the artwork. It's fine for now, and you can see the artwork pretty well, but the artwork would have a lot more impact with better lighting. So as a priority, when I do any more track lighting in here, it will be in here first. Uh, but it's it's lovely to have this option in here of being able to display more of a range as my photography that I've done over the years rather than just the Lake District stuff. So at the moment in here, it's focused on Scottish images. So we've got some images from the Isle of Harris. We've got some images from the Isle of Skye that I took years ago. Uh, and a couple of images from Glen Africa as well. And again, it'll appeal to a smaller audience, but it's just been, it, well, it is nice to be able to appeal to a broader audience rather than just a Lake District crowd. Because what's also common is this, and understandably so, is that you get a lot of people who come to the Lake District, they also obviously visit other national parks. So you'll get people who come in here who have also been to the Cairngorms or the Isle of Skye or Harris or wherever, and it's nice to be able to show them some of these images as well. So, as I say, at the minute, it's it's kind of a themed area. It'll probably stay like that for most of the time. So, who knows, in time, I might just have black and white images up here. I might just have woodland images, whatever it is. But it does give me a little bit more creative freedom in terms of displaying the artwork. You'll notice behind me, I'm sitting on a sofa. Uh, it, the gap behind me is absolutely perfect for a nice little two-seater sofa. And one of the reasons I put it in is just on quieter shifts where there's not a lot of people about, it's nice to be able to get away from the desk and just sit on a couch, basically. So it's, uh, it's maybe a little self-indulgent, but it's nice to have a little bit of comfort now and again. And what it, it'll also double as actually in future, especially in the winter months, is that if I'm out early on a shoot and say I need to get up at the crack of dawn, it's an hour for me to drive through here. So what I'm, I may use this as is a bed actually sometimes. So I might just uh, keep in here overnight and then go out and do the shoot in the early morning without having an hour's drive after it. So yeah, nice to have a couch in here. So I hope you've enjoyed that little tour of the gallery there. Uh, it's been really enjoyable getting started in here. And even though it's early days, I've been really encouraged by the things I've seen so far. And it's gonna be really interesting to see how this place progresses in the future. But if you're in the Lake District anytime soon, do pop in and, and stick your head in the door. It's nice to put a face to names. Uh, I could do that a lot in the old gallery, obviously, and I'd like to obviously do that in the future as well. I just want to say a big thank you as well to everyone that commented on the last video regarding my fiance's cancer diagnosis. It's been really touching to see the support from people and I'd maybe underestimated that a little bit, to be honest, but it's been lovely reading them and uh, I just want to pass on Joe's thanks as well and I'll be responding to all those comments, obviously, uh, in the near future. But uh, for now, I'm going to let you go. And next video will definitely be out in the field taking photographs. So until then, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you on the next one.